Thanks. Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Holly. I am the lead elementary guide here at Castle Island. Um, and today's workshop is going to be just a bit about um, uh, modeling the Montessori example for children. Next slide, slide, please. First, I thought everybody could just quickly introduce themselves, maybe your name, um, how you're related to Castle Island, and maybe something fun about yourself. Okay, I'm Colin Chapman, and I am Roselle uh, Farafino Benno's grandmother. What? And, um, I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing how I can help her uh, when I can actually spend some time with her, enhance her Montessori experience. Mm -hmm. Well, it's wonderful. It's nice to meet you. Hi. <laughs> uh, we are Yamile and Dan, and we are at Nina's parents. Uh, we just want to learn a little bit more about the Montessori. Um, method i guess <laughs> um what else would you want to say dan yeah it's just kind of how we can continue that learning process <laughs> continue that learning process great glad to have you here with us and diane did i see one more person come in Heather is here as well, yeah. Okay. So Heather, if you'd like, you can introduce yourself as well and just uh, kind of tell everybody how you are related to Castle Island. Say <laughs> everybody. All right, thank you, Heather. I'm ready for the next slide. Okay, so what is modeling? Um, I have a very short little video that I'd like everybody to watch, and then I'm going to ask you some questions after. So will this work as a video? It should. It was working for me this morning. Okay. Um, I see it as an image, unfortunately. Oh no. Is there a way that you can share your screen and, and show it? Yes, let me try. Let's see here. Let me just I, get to my power. Okay. So I can make you the host to share your screen. Is that right? I think so. Okay, let's see. Slideshow from current slide. Okay. No, what's that? Okay. All right. Share screen. Yes. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. I appreciate everyone's patience as we wait for the internet to cooperate. Look at that. Look at 
Okay, so let me go to our next slide. Da, da, da. Okay, so what did every, anyone want to say, share an observation about the mother cat's behavior in the video? And I can't see anyone while I'm screen sharing, so I apologize, but feel free to unmute and um, just share your thoughts. I didn't catch anything. I'll look at it again and then I could observe it. <laughs> okay. Let me go back. I'll play it again. So how about this time? Did we observe anything about the mother's cat be mother cat's behavior? The mother cat um, Charlie was using her hands uh, when they, it was almost like she was doing what they, the kitten was doing. Then the kitten stopped using her, her, her front paws and just started licking herself. The mother cat mm -hmm. stopped. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, did the mother cat stop what she was doing when the cat, ch the kitten changed what they were doing? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. Do we feel like the mother cat was correcting the kitten's technique, grooming technique? No, I didn't. I didn't feel that way at all. Okay, all of that ties, all of that ties into what I want to share. I figured adorable cats would be a good starting point <laughs> for today. So what is modeling? Mary Webster tells us that modeling is an example for imitation or emulation. And it sounds easy enough, right? Um, but sometimes it can be when it's applied to a Montessori setting, it can be um, a little more intimidating because there's all of the Montessori materials. Um, there's lots of Montessori trainings and it can all feel a little bit overwhelming. Dr. Montessori wrote in her book, The Absorbent Mind, our work is not to teach, but to help the absorbent mind in its work of development. How marvelous it would be if by our help, if by an intelligent treatment of the child, if by understanding the needs of, this, of his physical life and by feeding his intellect, we could prolong the period of functioning of the absorbent mind. So what Dr. Montessori is getting at here is, um, rather than just simply just teaching a child saying, okay, do this, then do this. But what if we can show for them? What if we can model for them um, these different things? And they, and it just, um, in, a, in such a way that it builds upon their natural curiosity and their natural intelligence. So all that, Sounds great, but what does it look like in a Montessori learning environment? Um, for us as Montes Montessorians, uh, we model lessons, both academic and social. Um, usually the social part, we kind of consider what we call grace and courtesy. Um, and the children are always observing. Um, I know for those of you who've been around kids for any period of time, um, kids pick up on things that you never would expect them to. You know, it could be um, maybe a, a hand gesture or maybe a word or, you know, kids are always observing the world around them. So in a Montessori classroom, um, we were, uh, the, we, the adults are referred to as guides or educators, not teachers. Um, the reason for that um, is Dr. Montessori says the child has a type of mind that absorbs knowledge and instructs himself. 
So rather than um, kind of having a more uh, traditional model of here's the teacher, here's the teacher at the chalkboard, you know, here, open your textbook to this page, I'm going to give you this information. Well, we do as guides present lessons and present um, different concepts and information, of course, um, but there's a lot more freedom for the title, first of all. Um, and when we are presenting a lesson, we try to use few, um, so that way, because after time, you know, kids will start to tune out your words. You know, if you've ever seen Charlie Brown, you know, the teacher is always the wah, 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 wah character. And that's not what we want to go for <laughs> as Montessorians. Um, in my Montessori training, there's a great analogy that I heard um, that we as the guides and educators are the hinge. We're not the, the door itself, you know if you have a door, you know, and you don't have a hinge, it's not going to work, it's not gonna open and close, but you never really notice the hinge. And that's kind of uh, what we strive for in our environment. We want the focus to be on the materials and on the child, and we're kind of secondary. Oh, I apologize. My PowerPoint is freezing up. One moment. Okay. So with Montessori, we also place an emphasis on the prepared environment. Um, this is another way we can model. We model um, by how we present ourselves to the children, by the tone of voice we're using, um, and also by how we present our learning environments, our classrooms. Um, there's always intention behind it. Um, it's based on the develop developmental needs of the child. Um, for example, in my classroom right now, I have a first grader and I have several fourth graders. So very di different developmental needs, even among, you know, my fourth graders. So when I'm planning out kind of what materials I'm placing out and what lessons I might want to present, I'm keeping all of those things, all of those needs and individual personalities in mind. Um, and we also want to make sure sure that whatever we're doing is going to maximize the opportunity for independent learning. So if you were to come into my learning environment, you'd see um, much lower shelves, um, shelves that all of the children can reach on their own with um, materials that any of them are allowed to pick up and touch and manipulate. Um, another uh, thing that Dr. Montessori touches on in her book, The Four Planes of Education, is that she says, I have found that in his development, the child passes through certain phases, each of which has its own particular needs. The characteristics of each are so different that the passages from one phase to another have been described by certain psychologists as rebirths. So when we're modeling and we're preparing to try to kind of implement the sort of Montessori lifestyle, you know, we have to be aware of each, where each child is. And the four planes of development, as Dr. Montessori describes them, are infancy, um, from, six, from birth to three years, and then kind of like later from three to six, um, childhood from six to 12, adolescence from 12 to 18, and then maturity or independence from 18 to 24. This video is um, from a Montessorian, um, and she talks touches on something that I feel is very important in modeling. It's, um, it's the concept of spontaneity. While we do always want to be intentional and have that sort of prepared environment, um, children are also learning a lot from just our spontaneous interactions as well. So let's see. Oops.
see. I'm going to pause sharing for a second and see if I can play this directly from YouTube. Does anyone have any questions or thoughts while I try to cue that up? Holly, I had a low tech idea. If for some reason it's not able to be shared on Zoom, could you, yeah, I'm having trouble with the Wi Fi uh, connectivity. It keeps saying it's unstable. Oh, can online. you hear me okay? Yeah, we can. I can. I was wondering if you could find the video on your phone and just hold the phone up for the camera. Is that a, okay. a workaround that might be possible? Holly's freezing now. Yeah. Oh. Holly, can you hear us? I wonder if we should move your operations, Holly, to downstairs so you're closer to the router. You found the calendar. Athena has the school calendar. Okay, so Holly's going to relocate in the building closer to the Wi Fi router. And probably reconnect. <laughs> Well, I really liked that cat video. I thought it was really brilliant. So the mom was doing her work of cleaning, bathing herself, grooming, and the, the child, the cat child was observing. You could see the cat's eyes observing the parent, um, was making an attempt to do what the mom was doing. So it was like intrinsically motivated to do what the mom was doing. There was no lesson instruction. And um, the mom was just doing her work. 
right? The mom wasn't giving a lesson. The mom was going about what she would have gone about, whether she was a mom or not a mom. She was doing her daily work. And the child was observing and the parent was not observing the child. <laughs> and whether the child made a mistake or did it accurately um, or not, the parent just kept doing their work. I thought that was a brilliant video. Hello, apologies. Excellent. We can see and hear you in real time. And I know because I can hear you in the other room. So I'm going to close the door. <laughs> Okay, thank you again all for your patience as with the uh, Wi-Fi difficulties here. So we're going to try this again. And if I can't get the video to work through my PowerPoint, then we will, I've got it queued up on my phone. Oh, I'm sorry, Diane, could you give me permission to uh, screen share again? <laughs> yes, sorry about that. No worries. Okay, there you are. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. We were just talking about the cat video. It was so oh, good. I really love the cat video. This video now. <laughs> As an educator, I have to know myself so well that I am able and not afraid to expose, to share what I am. Because it's in all my spontaneity that I can teach. What to teach the other is not what I am preparing, is what I am living. What teaches the child uh, the importance of this vase, of this glass of, uh, of water, of this pencil, is my attitude towards this pencil. It's the spontaneity of my life that transmits to the child the values that I have. So I have my, for being an educator, for being able to converse with someone, one thing I have to most develop is this security to be spontaneous. Because it's just when I spontaneously act that I educate. It's not when I prepare a little lecture, but it's in the moves and the feelings that go through as I talk, as I show. So what I love about that video is, is that um, it touches upon, you know, as adults, us being self-aware um, of just our attitudes and, and our, our actions toward other people or other things. Um, and I've noticed as well as in my time here at Castle Island, um, sometimes the or often the best lessons that I've had with my students are kind of these spontaneous organic ones, you know, maybe it's, um, you know, just an organic conversation or, you know, just, um, and that kind of goes in the child leads discussion with questions or, you know, kind of like just expands upon it upon them themselves. So I think it's important too, as parents, as grandparents, educators, um, people who care about kids that we understand that we don't have to, you know, we don't have to be perfect. Um, and that learning can often happens um, in kind of these, in just kind of like the mundane, the, every, the little everyday things in life. So in the home, um, you know, 
as parents, as grandparents, or as caretakers of children, we often put a lot of pressures on ourselves that, oh my gosh, you know, we have these children that we're responsible for and that, you know, someday they're going to go out into the big wide world. And, you know, it's understandable. It's, you know, there's a lot of gravity to that. And something that Dr. Montessori, I really like, said that I really liked was that recognizing the merits of the child does not diminish the authority of the father and the mother for when they come to realize that they are not the constructor but merely the helpers of this construction, then they will be able to do their duty better. They will help the child with a greater vision. So what I take from that is, well, yes, there's um, a certain amount of authority that we have in this home. You know, it's not all on us. We are helping the child. We're not... Um, you know, building the child from scratch. The child has their own talents and, and, you know, sort of innate wisdom and knowledge. And we're here to just kind of help scaffold that, like, you know, like the scaffolding on a building. Um, so what does that mean for us, practically speaking? Um, Dr. Montessori also said, to assist a child, we must provide him with an environment which will enable him to develop freely. So I think it's important to kind of step back, you know, and observe from your child's perspective, you know, what kind of things are they able to access at home? What kind of things are they, you know, you can literally get down on their perspective, you know, what do they see, you know, do they see um, just cabinet doors? Do, do they get to see um, maybe like a beautiful floral arrangement or maybe some snacks that they, they are able to access independently? You know, of course, safety is important, you know, even as Montessorians, we, we do take safety precautions we make sure we put the little uh the surge protect you know the little protectors to, you know in the um power outlets you know things like that of course you know we're not just going to you know do anything that's inherently dangerous um and you can kind of also take time to think about are there things in your daily life that would be appropriate for your child to do independently so in my home for example um I have some hooks on the wall by right by, it, by the um, entryway. Um, I have some that are my height and then I have some that are at my daughter's eye level so that she can have that practice hanging up her own coat, hanging up her own hat. Um, we have a small shoe rack by the door so she can have that practice. She's able to put her own shoes away. So the lower hooks, um, you know, snacks at a level that the child can access, um, you know, at school, you know, pre-COVID, um, in the primary classrooms, there would be, you know, maybe some pretzels or, you know, some orange slices at the child's level where with some small plates where they can, you know, get their own plate and their own snack and, you know, small cups so that they can get their own water. Um, joining in meal prep is a great way. Um, you can, by modeling, letting the child see what you're doing, um, you know, cleaning vegetables is a great way that the child can kind of, you know, learn from you and, um, or like preparing a salad, um, things like that. Um, you know, another way is demonstrating that everything in the home has its own place. And this is how we return it to its proper place when we're done with it. That's a huge thing. You know, and it could be hard too, because, you know, life gets busy. Um, our tone of voice, how we speak to them, how we speak to um, if you have a significant other, how we speak to them, how we speak to visitors in the home. Like the children will learn so much from the way just that you talk to them and talk to other people. Um, you know, once COVID is done, hosting guests. Um, something fun that my daughter enjoys doing is helping make a cup of tea for a guest. Um, I have a little electric kettle. Um, I help her with the pouring because it's pretty bulky, but you know, I let her, you know, add the sugar, you know, ask the guests, do they want milk, you know, things like that, let her stir and then like serve the cup of tea. So some final thoughts that I want to share is that, you know, modeling a Montessori lifestyle and kind of implementing Montessori into our everyday lives doesn't require expensive materials. We have the expensive materials at, at, at school, we've got you covered. Um, 
you know, intention is crucial. Self-awareness is crucial. Um, and, you know, ch the children in your lives will always surprise you with how much they are naturally absorb. And at the end of the day, actions are going to kind of have more of an impact than all of the talking will. And that's what I have. Did anyone have any thoughts or questions or maybe their own ideas that came to mind while we were discussing? Holly, it just came to mind on your last slide of that meme that's pretty popular. There's um, a parent and a child um, sitting in public transportation and another family, a parent and child, sitting next to them. And a mom on her phone and her child on her phone asked the parent reading a book, with the child reading a book, how do you get your child to read? <laughs> It's so true, though. You know, and I'm totally guilty of this. Um, my children have books and I want them to read before they go to bed. And then I tell them that while I'm doing this, I'm like, well, why don't you read a chapter before you go to bed? <laughs> well, well, let me put this down and now say, why don't you read a chapter before you go to bed? Just like I'm going to do right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great example. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we opened Castle Island, we were in the Boys and Girls Club, and they run a conventional after school program. And without meaning to criticize them, I mean, what they do there is pretty common. But um, sometimes the aftercare children in their program would be noisy. It's after school, they're chatting with each other. And it was pretty common to hear their aftercare counselors yelling. It's time to be quiet, be quiet. <laughs> Very so loud while they were telling them to be quiet, which is, you know, the antithesis of what we do in Castle Island, where you walk up to a child and put your hand on their shoulder and say, please remember to use an inside voice. <laughs> I think that's so important too. And also, um, kind of from like a social emotional perspective, just like modeling language. Um, you know, something that I do with Amelia is I'll say, I notice you're really angry, you know, or I notice you seem sad, you know, tell me about that. Or, you know, if she's really upset and, you know, it's like, you know, sometimes kids get to that point where it's just like, no, everything is horrible and I'm gonna be, yeah, you know, I'll just say, hey, I see you're angry. Let's take some deep breaths, you know? Um, a big thing with us is smelling the flowers, blowing out the candles. So we practice that even before, you know, things get to a certain level. And over time, that's something that Amelia has started doing on her own. Um, the other day, um, I don't remember exactly all of the circumstances, but I could feel myself getting frustrated. Like, I'm like, okay, Amelia, we just need to, you know, we need to, because, you know, even as Montessorians, we have moments where we're just like, ah, and she's like, mommy, I notice you're frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, I'm going to take some deep breaths. I am frustrated. <laughs> Any other thoughts, questions, recipes as I ask my children? <laughs> I just wanted to say that, um, so I'm a retired nursing home administrator and um, I, Heather is my eldest daughter. I have uh, two others as well and when they were young, and I was working, um, I used to take them into the nursing home with me. When, so they grew up around the elderly people in the nursing home. Um, and there are all three of them um, in some, one way or another are uh, caring for other people as a career. Um, talking about modeling, 
They used to come in on Mother's Day with me. I used to give flowers to all the ladies and they would be right there. They used to entertain the, the residents. And I think that that's the biggest thing that we can do is, is model. And that's such a gift that, you know, it's such a gift and such a legacy. You know, um, in the second video that we're watching, um, one thing that she said that I really loved is she's like, it's not what I'm preparing, it's what I'm leaving. And I was just, oh, I love that so much. Well, I want to thank everybody for being here. This was really fun to do for me and to prepare and to give me some things to think about as well. And um, I'll put my email address in the chat box. So if you ever have like a Montessori question or, you know, something that you thought of after, I will do my best to give an answer, but I will definitely respond. And even if I don't know the answer, I'll still respond. <laughs> so there's my email. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. It was nice to talk with everybody. Thanks for spending part of your Saturday with us. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great uh, rest of your weekend. It was a really excellent presentation. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.